Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am a certified supply chain professional and I have several years of experience in managing multiple supply chains. I will be discussing hundreds of questions in my videos which will enable the aspirants to attempt CSCP exam in the easiest possible manner. I assure you that my videos will give you excellent tips for passing CSCP exam in the first attempt. I will start with some basic set of questions which will build strong foundation of supply chain concepts. Let's begin with question 1. The primary reason for a firm to pursue strategic supply chain activities is to Option A. Gain competitive advantage Option B. Reduce cost Option C. Increase productivity Option D. Decrease product lead time now before we start evaluating all the options, please consider that there are two ways of solving a question. A. Elimination method and B. Choosing the best option. I will be switching between these two methods while looking for an answer based on the need of the question. So let's proceed and evaluate all the options. Option A. Gain competitive advantage. Supply chain is all about gaining competitive edge. Therefore this option seems correct. However, let's evaluate the other three options. Option B, reducing cost. Reducing cost eventually helps you gain competitive edge. Therefore, it has already been covered under option A. Option C, increase in productivity. What happens when, in produ when productivity is increased? You gain a competitive edge. Option D, decrease in product lead time. Decrease in product lead time will reduce time to market your product. This means that you will capture the market share faster than your competitor, which is again a competitive edge. So all of these options are correct, but option A summarizes the other three options. Therefore, option A is the most appropriate answer. Question 2. Which of the following phrases most accurately describes the complete flow of demand information? Option A. From supplier to customer. Option B, from customer to manufacturer. Option C, from customer to supplier. Option D, from customer to manufacturer. To answer this question, you should know that there are two kinds of flow in a supply chain, upstream and downstream. Now, what is upstream flow? Upstream supply chain activities include all the activities related to the manufacturer's suppliers like raw material suppliers, product packaging suppliers, gas and electricity suppliers, etc. Whereas downstream activities pertain to entities and process, processes which helps in delivering the product to the final customer like distributors, wholesalers and retailers, etc. So before we proceed, Please remember that information always flow back and forth along the supply chain. If you will look at the question again carefully, you will realize that the key word in the question is demand information. Now exercise your mind a little and ask yourself a basic question. Where does demand information come from? Let me tell you that supply chain is all about customer. Therefore, demand always comes from the customer, which is your down downstream end. Based on this information, there are two options which can be eliminated easily from the given choices. That is option A and D since they begin from supplier's end which is, which is an upstream end and it is entirely wrong. Many people believe that option B is correct since manufacturer is a major entity in a supply chain which produces or manufactures the product. Therefore, this is going to be the right answer but, but unfortunately, this is not true. Option C is the correct answer, which says demand information flows from customer to supplier. Now, let me explain you why. When demand information is received by the manufacturer, then obviously he takes some action on it. He contacts his suppliers and communicates his demand to them in order to have the raw material to produce the demanded goods. This means that demand information always travel from customer to supplier and it is not limited to manufacturers and only. Now before I proceed to question 3, I would like to remind you that I will be sharing and discussing several videos on CSCP questions. Therefore, I would request you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated. 
Now let's move to question 3. Which of the following considerations is an important supply chain design decision? Option A. Product design. Option B. Selecting supporting information systems. Option C. Identifying labor force requirements. Option D. Identifying training programs. This is an easy one. Let's evaluate all the options. Option A. Product design seems uh, the most uh, appropriate answer to me since uh, supply chain revolves around the product and product design plays a vital role in logistics, marketing and many other major functions of the supply chain. Now let's see what we have in option B, selecting supporting information systems. This can be an important consideration too, but it eventually helps design the product. Therefore, this cannot be the appropriate answer. Option C and D, identifying labor force requirements, identifying training programs. They both are irrelevant, irrelevant and has nothing to do with the supply chain design. Therefore, option A is the right answer. Question 4. The primary reason for the evolution of the supply chain is Option A. Few, fewer rejects due to poor quality. Option B. Increased on-time delivery. Option C. Increased cost savings. Option D. Increased communications. Now let's evaluate option A. Fewer rejects due to poor quality. This sounds irrelevant because this is not the core function of the supply chain. So let's move to option B. Increased on-time delivery. This seems an appropriate answer because with proper planning and forecasting delivery time can be improved. Now let's see what we have in option C. Option C says increased cost saving. Supply chain is definite uh, supply chain definitely helps an organization to reduce costs by adopting various methods of lean production. Therefore this option also seems correct. Now let's move to option D. Increased communication. I think this is the best of all the available options because it enhances collaboration and integration among all the entities in a supply chain. This in turns, this in turns results in increased visibility and increased visibility helps you to make timely decisions which eventually reduce cost and improve delivery time. For example, if a retailer is sharing point of sale data with you and if, inven if inventory level of particular item has dropped to a certain level, then you can instantly take proactive action with regards to inventory replenishments and on time delivery. Therefore, option D sums up option B and C too. Which, so, op, so the correct answer is option D. Question 5. Companies are more likely to consider the consequences of their product design decision when they view the reverse supply chain as an extension of the option A forward supply chain, option B marketing process, option C manufacturing process, option D sales and operation planning process. Let's evaluate all the options. Okay, first I would like to highlight that product design and packaging plays a vital role in managing reverse supply chains. Product returns due to service, repair or disposal purpose are the core functions of the reverse supply chain process. Therefore, answer is quite obvious here. The reverse supply chain is an extension of sub forward supply chain, which means option A is correct. Other options like marketing process, manufacturing process and sales and operations planning has nothing to, nothing to do with the reverse supply chain. So option A is the correct answer. Question six. Reverse supply chain activity typically peaks nearest the beginning of which of the following stages of the product life cycle. A. Introduction B. Growth C. Maturity D. Decline In order to answer this question, you should be knowing what a reverse supply chain is and why it is used. So let me tell you, reverse supply chain is majorly used for those products which have, which have, which have been consumed and require disposal. For example, your old television sets or monitors. Now think about the life cycle stage in which the product needs to be disposed of. Needless to say, it is the decline phase. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Question 7. The primary objective of supply chain management is Option A. Minimizing transportation cost Option B. Reducing inventory levels Option C. Taking a systems approach 
Option D, implementing advanced technologies. All of the given options seem correct in this particular question. Uh, now let's evaluate all the options and find out which is the most appropriate one. Minimizing transportation cost. Supply chain helps you minimize transportation cost. It also helps you reduce inventory levels and it also helps you implement advanced technologies. But how is it all done? And the answer is by taking a systems approach. Therefore, option C is the most appropriate one. Question 8. Which of the following situations is an example of postponement? Option A. Shipments are broken down into small groups for re reshipment. Option B. Shipments are consolidated immediately for reshipment. Option C. Production begins after a customer order is received. Option D. Partially assembled goods are assembled at a later stage. In order to answer this question, you should be knowing the definition of the postponement. Now let me tell you, postponement is a supply chain strategy in which final differentiation of the product is delayed until the least, latest possible time. For example, subway sandwiches. Now if you will relate this example with the given options, you will easily figure out the answer. Now let's start. Option A and B are talking about shipments. So they have nothing to do with the postponement strategy. So we are going to evaluate option C and D. Option C states that production begins after a customer order is received. At first glance, this option seems an appropriate one. But what if the lead time of the ordered product is too long? You will eventually lose your customer. Therefore, this is not the viable option to pursue. Option D, which states that partially assembled goods are assembled at a later stage. This seems a feasible option and it is the correct one. Please recall my subway sandwich example in which the customer walks into the outlet to buy a subway sandwich. All the ingredients of the sandwich are ready for assembling. Based on the customer's preference, sandwich is then prepared. Question 9. Which of the following outcomes occur when direct shipment is used instead of a distribution network? Option A. Outbound transportation cost is reduced. Option B. Inventory velocity is reduced. Option C. Order fill rates are reduced. Option D. Inventory obsolescence is reduced. Now let's evaluate all the options. Option A is incorrect. Your, in your outbound uh, transportation cost will increase. It will not decrease since you will be dispatching multiple small orders to individual customers rather than supplying uh, big chunks to few distributors. Option B and C, they both seem appropriate answers since you will be catering to many small individual orders instead of feeding big chunks to your distributors, which will indicate that the order fill rates and velocity is declining. Now let's see what uh, option D says. It says inventory obsolescence is reduced. This is the most significant factor to consider. When you are shipping direct orders to customers, you have a better visibility of your demand and you can produce goods accordingly. On the contrary, distributors usually maintain buffer inventories. Hence, they order extra units in which the visibility is lost and you don't have an accurate information about the customer demand. Therefore, based on distributors demand, you forecast and produce extra units that, that can potentially increase the risk of obsolescence. So option D is the correct answer. Question 10. A company that sells engineer to order products is planning implementation of a supplier relationship management system SRM for direct materials. Which of the following factors is most likely to make the implementation difficult? Option A. Complexity of the purchasing process. Option B. Cost of the application software upgrades. Option C. Management of variable lead times. Option D. Resistance of material suppliers. Now let's evaluate option A. Since you are implementing an SRM software to reduce the complexity of the purchasing process, so it, can, so it can't be a hurdle in implementing the software itself. So it cannot be option A. Option B. Cost of the application software upgrades. Cost, had, cost has nothing to do with the difficulty of implementing software. It's a separate uh, thing. Option C, management of variable lead times. Engineer to order 
is a type of manufacturing where a product is engineered and produced after an order has been received. Therefore, management of variable lead time of different raw materials or components required to produce the ordered product will be difficult to manage. So option C is the correct answer. Option D is irrelevant. That says res resistance of material suppliers. It has nothing to do with the implementation of an SRM process.